Hello, welcome to Stampin' by Hannah here on Facebook. Thank you for joining me on a Sunday morning. I'm sorry I'm a little bit quiet this morning. My husband is asleep um, in the next room, so I'm trying to be a little bit more subtle than I normally would be. So if you can't hear me, do let me know and I'll adjust. Um, <laughs> so, good morning, Tina. It's so nice to see you, although it'd be lunch... No, it'll still be... A yeah, it'll be lunchtime for you, won't it, in Germany? So, <laughs> good morning. I have one quick card for you today. I do apologise, it is one and it's fairly quick. But I do want to tell you about... Ooh, clear mount stamps. I've got a bit of paper, but it, I don't know if it's backwards or not. Because it's backwards for me, but I don't know if it's backwards for you. Because um, <laughs> my little brain can't cope with Facebook life. <laughs> I know things move around on Facebook life and I can never remember where they are. So... I'm going to tell you about clear mount stamps, sorry, cling mount stamps, because our red rub, Stampin' Up! red rubber stamps have changed a little bit with the new spring summer catalogue, and I haven't mentioned it very much, um, but I wanted to kind of give you a bit of a, a heads up about what's changed and how awesome they are. So, are you ready? <laughs> Give me time, I'm in one of those moods this morning where I could, I could either talk for England or just get on with it. But I think they'll probably want me to just get on with it this morning. <laughs> I still haven't got a blind for this window, this one here. So I've still got this kind of strange bright thing in the corner of my room. Um, I have picked one, I just haven't convinced my husband yet. Slash he doesn't know that I need one um, for that window. But it is happening, it is going to happen, I'm going to get a blind. <laughs> I've got blinds to order for the living room downstairs. We've got a nice bay window in our house now. And I want Roman blinds for there. And I've also got baby's room blind to order, so I'm just going to... I'm gonna whap it on. <laughs> Hope he doesn't notice. I think I think that might be my plan. I'm hoping he can't hear me. <laughs> Cause that might have ruined that plan. But hey, never mind. Right, cling mount stamps. Are you ready? Let's go. So I'm gonna turn you around and tilt you on down. I remembered this week to put my lamp on, so I'm hoping that you can actually see what's on my desk this week. So, how's that? Lovely, I think that's gonna stay. So, cling mount stamps. Stampin' Up have always sold red rubber stamps. We do red rubber stamps and photopolymer stamps. Now, photopolymer stamps are ones like these. <laughs> where you can see straight through them. This is the beautiful Butterfly Gala that I am still playing with um, because I'm st I've got class on Tuesday and I haven't made all the cards for it yet. That's a really bad, bad confession to make, isn't it? So <laughs> that's out on my desk at the minute. So they're photopolymer. And we Stampin' Up! have always, and they're really well known for their quality red rubber stamps. Now, the Stampin' Up! red rubber that, the, the red rubber that Stampin' Up! use is fabulous. These stamps are all manufactured um, in-house by Stampin' Up in their facility in Utah in the States and for a long time we've had two different kinds of red rubber stamps we've had what we've called clear mount and what we've called wood mount now from this catalogue this is the spring summer from this catalogue they're not releasing any more wood stamps so wood mount stamps have gone although if you want some if you want one out of the annual catalogue so this one is for one of my lynn i know you asked for a catalogue last week and i haven't got around to posting it to you yet if i'll either drop it into your door this week or i'll drop it into the hotel on tuesday um because <laughs> i'm just i've been away with work all week so there is still if it says wood mount in this catalogue you can still get hold of it in wood if it says clear mount in this catalogue they're still available in clear mount but in this catalogue you will not find wood and you will not find cling. clear. You will only find cling mount stamps. Now, they look the same as the old clear mount ones. So they come on a sheet of red rubber like that and they've got a kind of protective um, paper coating on the back. The difference is the stickers. Now, if you have had stamp out cling, clear mount stickers before, gotta, gotta get the words right. You will know that the stickers were really awkward to put on and they just fall off your block. Like I have, I, I've had a look through my stamp collection and I haven't got any now that I have actually mounted with clear mount stickers because they were just rubbish, they'd fall off. Cling mount 
These now stick to your blocks like super glue. Um, to the point where they're actually a little bit too sticky. So I have some top tips for you. They are awesome. They do not fall off. Um, I would argue that putting the stickers on now is even better than just using them plain. So you can still, um, let me get one of these stamps out. Let's do this big fountain because this is the one I'm going to stamp I'm going to use today. This is Flowing Fountain. This is also the stamp set I'm using for my February class. So we're having a bit of a, um, a sneaky peek today. So if you peel the, the plastic um, paper backing off your stamps, you've got a kind of foam and it is a bit tacky. And you can use that to stick that to your block. And it's not going anywhere. It's not. It's fine. But if you want to guarantee that these stamps, are, uh, this stamp is not going to fall off when you're stamping, you need to put these stickers on. So they're really easy. They come on a sheet. Okay. So all you need to do is find which one is the right one. Easier with images than it is with sentiment sometimes. Um, and you'll find that each sticker has a kind of line down the middle of it. So you can peel off either side like that so then you've got this sticker that's sticking up now this is really sticky this side because it is actually glued then what we need to do is now line up this our stamp with that sticker so now this is one of those things that's going to be way easier to do without a camera in the way so let's give it a go that's why i've picked a nice big stamp because i'm less likely to get it wrong there right make sure it's pushed down like that you can drum on it whatever <laughs> and then you're going to peel it off now that that's how sticky that is and it's not going to fall off my finger either they are really tacky now that's great for making sure it's not going to fall off your block but but they are a little bit too sticky when you first get them so i would advise bit of a cardigan <laughs> and pick up some of the kind of lint off your cardigan or your trousers or whatever it helps it to be less tacky the other thing I do and I do it more for sentiments than I do for big images like this but I'm going to do it for this one anyway is a trick with some washi tape so I don't know where this washi tape came from I have a funny feeling it's an old studio calico one from a long long time ago um, <laughs> It's so bad that it actually doesn't peel off in a in like normal pieces anymore. It's ripped at some point and I can't, I get like little bits like that off. So, but it's enough. So I only want a little bit and I'm going to stick this washi tape to the, like a little bit of my stamp, which means because, because there's, these stamps are so, that it's now so sticky that you're at risk of actually the sticker sticking so well to your block that it'll actually rip your stamp. <laughs> so, and we don't want to do that. So if you're you're peeling your stamp off, you need to get right underneath. So, like right underneath there. Now I haven't pushed that on properly, but if that's been sat and you've stamped on it, it's going to be well stuck. If you've put that washi tape on, you've always got a bit that's not stuck to your block and you can use that as leverage to take it off. The other thing that I do sometimes do, and I've now, I've got part of, I am now 25 weeks pregnant and I've developed this awful runny nose. And it's not a cold, I'm not ill, but my nose will not stop running. The other thing I do occasionally is I grab my take a pick tool and on here there is a kind of spatula end like that and that's really handy for getting underneath if you're like me and you've got either no fingernails or you've got gel acrylics on uh, but you can't get underneath something so that's a really i mean i love this tool it's awesome I think they're about 12 pounds and i honestly greatest thing i've ever bought so i need that one and i also need a sentiment and i'm going to use the sentiment that says you mean so much to me which is this one so i'll show you exactly i'll show you again how i've mounted these up. So I've taken the stamp out of that sheet of red rubber and they don't fall out of there either. You won't find that like when they arrive they're all over the box. And then I need to find the sticker, peel that backing off. Make sure you peel the backing off your stamp as well. Ask me how I know that. 
<laughs> yes, I have done it once. I've learnt my lesson. Right, stick that on there. And then that will then peel off. And you've got this sticker on. And it, they are really sticky. But that's great in the fact that it means it's not going to fall off your block. You're not going to ink it up. I'm sure we've all had this happen where you've inked up a stamp. You've got it over your project. And it's fallen off. And you've ended up with a big, awful, inky mess. <laughs> Never going to happen with these, I promise you. Right, so that is my little bit of washi tape. So I've got that bit of leverage to take that back off my block. Okay, like that. Because if particularly if you leave these on for any length of time, I swear the longer they sit on blocks, the harder they are to get off. Um, particularly if you're a heavy stamper, they can get really well welded. So that piece of washi tape is really handy to help you get that off there. So, shall we make a card? <laughs> like I said, it's only a quick card today um, because I wanted to kind of give you a really good in-depth look at cling out stamps. They are fabulous. I am completely in love with them. I think they're just wonderful. I actually quite enjoy putting the stickers on now as well. Um, we'll be doing that at the end of <laughs> when I film the rest of this. I will be putting the rest of those stickers on um, later on. The other thing that you can do and I, what I have done is I have saved every one of these pieces. So when I've taken the stickers out, there's all that cling mount stuff underneath. So all of this bit, all this white area here that's not a sticker, not, you know, it's not got a stamp on it, that's got cling under there. So what I have done is I've kept hold of them so I can now convert my clear mount stamps and my old ones into cling mount. So they're never gonna fall off my blocks either. But that might be a separate video. I will do that. I will share that one with you at some point. All right. So, oh, what? Just before I get on with my card, the there are cling mount stamps in the celebration catalogue as well. So um, these two, the Home to Roost and the By the Bay, are red rubber and they're cling mount. So if you want to try them, and you want, but you don't want to pay for them, order forty five pounds worth of stuff, and you can choose one of these completely for free, and then you get to try them. You know without having to invest hard-earned money in it. I think that's pretty cool as well. So, I have pre-cut and pre-scored everything for this card today. And it's a bit of a sneaky peek of what I'm gonna do for my class in um, February, but not quite, because it. I've what I've done, I'll show you. I love these. I think these are, Stampin' Up! are awesome for this. Have you seen in the catalogue, you've got these You Can Make It's. Okay, and I've got one already prepped for you for next week as well. I, I'm going to do a whole you can make it for you, but this you can make it. You can make these cards, which are stunningly pretty, right? and just put one item number in and it gives you all of these things. I think that's a really cool way of just, you know, really quick crafting. Just adding, you know, I really like those cards. I want to make those. Let's have all of those things. Dead easy. But the technique that they're using here, I think, is really cool. So I thought I would share it with you. I have a card base in a lemon lime twist. I have, of course, left my bone folder across the other side of my room, so I'll just, just burnish it with my thumb. Um, I've got a layer of Whisper White. A layer of the Gingham Gala Designer Series paper, also in the Lemon Lime Twist colour, which I think is so pretty. This this Designer Series paper is gorgeous because it's got um, a kind of little gingham on one side and a much bigger on the other. I've used the little side this on today. And I've got another matte and layer of Lemon Lime Twist and Whisper White for the front of there and a piece of scrap for my sentiment. So I'm going to take this piece and I want grey granite. Okay, I'm going to ink up this nice big fountain stamp, which isn't going to fall off because it's that fabulous cling mount. Okay. Get that lined up with my grid paper. The easiest way to make sure that your stamping is straight is to line everything up with grid paper. Oh, that's the way I do it anyway. <laughs> Don't know if anybody else does the same. Right, and then I'm also going to stamp my sentiment at the same time because I'm using the same colour. I love grey granite. I think it's my absolute go-to grey. It's just so pretty. 
So that's there like that. Then, good morning, Sam, how are you doing? Right, then we're gonna color this in. Now, you could take your blends to this, your alcohol pens, it would be very pretty. Um, but I'm gonna add just hints of color to it. I'm gonna use Barbie Blue and Lemon Lime Twist and a blender pen. And like I said, this is the technique that they've showcased on that you can make it. Um, and I just think these pens are so underused. They're just ace. So I'm gonna take my Barbie Blue first. And I'm just gonna open it out like that. And I'm gonna take my blender pen. I'm gonna touch my blender pen to the ink pad. I know this is probably gonna be really controversial. Some people will squeeze them and put the ink in this bit, which I do do for watercolor, but I tend to just go straight to the ink pad for using with blender pens. And then I'm gonna just create a hint of blue in the bottom of the fountain with that blender pen. Now, we can then add a bit of blue coming down on here so you can see it's like water falling. It's a fountain after all. Okay, really quick and really simple colouring. Then, we do exactly the same with my lemon lime twist. So I'm going to take, this is an old style ink pad, so if you buy a lemon lime twist now it'll look like that and not like this, but I'm a cheapskate and haven't upgraded mine yet. <laughs> I'll confess. So I'm going to use the other end of my blender pen. So they're great these because they've got two sides. I've got blue on one side. I'm going to use this side for green. I'm going to touch that to my ink pad again. And then we've got a load of leaves on the bottom of here. So I'm just going to kind of pick up the leaves with a kind of hint of green. I'm not colouring them each individually. I'm literally just dabbing that blender pen somewhere near where the leaves are because I'm not looking for really precise colouring out of this. I'm literally just looking for a hint of colour. And that's it. How fun. Oh gosh, I think I've broken that. There we go. <laughs> How quick and easy was it to colour that? And it's stunning. I love this stamp. This is the first time I've inked it, obviously, because I've just mounted it up. Um, but it just, it's just lovely. So... I need my paper snips and this is another thing I do probably far too often. I'm literally just going to hand cut out my sentiment. Just like, well, I'm going to just take a little bit off the bottom as well. And I don't mind it's a bit wonky because it's handmade. Right. And then it's just really quick and simple case of layering it together. So snail on the back of that piece and this piece I think is cut to seven you know what I'll measure them and I'll put all the measurements on my blog post later on which I will link <laughs> at some point look at that love that so and then I'm gonna layer my piece of designer series paper up with that mat of whisper white and I tend to cut my mats half a centimeter shorter and narrower than each piece so, I do not do fussy cutting well, Sam, at all. I, it's a disaster. It's always a disaster, but I go with it anyway. <laughs> always cut my mats half a centimetre shorter an hour to give me that perfect border around the outside. And this piece of whisper white's cut half a centimetre shorter and narrower than my card base. So that all my mats and layers are the same size. All of my standard card measurements, I do have a page on my blog with those all on, all of those on. So if you click over to standbyhannah.co.uk and go to the page, there's a bar at the top and one of the options is about me. And if you click on there, there's a drop down menu. It sounds really complicated, but there's a thing on there that says standard card measurements. I will link it on the blog post. Um, and yes, they're all on there. So I'm going to pop some dimensionals on the back of this piece. I do like my dimensionals. I tend to use six. <laughs> I found that if I just put one in the middle, it would cave. But if I put two in the middle, it's not so bad. So. And then I throw dimensional backs everywhere and find them all over the house. Cat loves playing with them, actually. Loves playing with bits, bats with dimensionals. Got a bit of an obsession. Right, 
So this is going to go on here like there. And then we've got the You Mean So Much To Me and I'm going to pop that sort of there-ish, really precise. So I'm going to pop a dimensional on the back of one end. I'm going to snail the other. And then just add it on like that. And that is my card for today. That is it. Done. Finished. Pretty. <laughs> so the Flowing Fountain stamp set is the basis of my card class for February. But my bunny nose is kicking off again. <laughs> so if you, and I'll be launching that soon, much so of my January card class is on Tuesday. Um, and the booking for that has already closed, unfortunately. Um, but my next one will be in February. I will confirm the dates when I'm at my venue on Tuesday and let you know probably, hopefully, hopefully on Wednesday, <laughs> exactly when that um, will be and, and when booking opens and all of that. So this will be my stamp set for February. I have a list of things I need to tell you before I go. Let me find it. Where did it go? There we go. So, yes. So February card class is coming soon. If you want to hear more from me on a regular basis, do subscribe to my emails. Um, you can find all of the information about that over on my blog. That's stampingbyhammer.co.uk. And there's a bit at the top. And then there's some, a bit down the side if you're on a desktop as well about stamping inspiration emails. And they are, um, yeah, they come to you quite regularly. And then if you want to order anything out of this book or I'll grab Lynn's catalogue again because it's handy. This one. Um, use my online store and enter this code at checkout um, to join in with my code club and I will send you something fabulous um, and free at the beginning of next month. Probably, probably some sequin embe embellishments but I haven't, haven't decided. Hold on a second Tina and I'll discover if it's available for you in German. Ooh, where is it? Where's it gone? I had it! <laughs> the page open! <sighs> Where did it go? There it is. No, it's only in English. So if you, um, so that's a good idea, isn't it? So Stampin' Up! stamps quite often come in three different languages. And it will tell you one thing. So Needle and Thread, which is stunning, love this, tells you that it's available in French and German. This one, doesn't say that so I'm sorry Tina it's only in English Ooh, it's still pretty though it's still very pretty and I'm looking forward to stamping with those birds as well so lots of stamping going on in my craft room today hopefully if this video hasn't woken up my husband I will possibly be filming for you this afternoon <laughs> fingers crossed for that as well thank you ever so much everybody for joining me today and I will see you again very, very soon. Don't forget that I come to you live on Facebook every Sunday morning at 11. Um, I will be putting this one up on YouTube as well if you fancy catching the replay. Um, and I think that's it. So have a fabulous Sunday, everybody. And I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.